let's start with um, uh, something that I noticed from one of, of um, uh, two point sessions this week. Something I thought was quite hilarious. They were apparently able to locate a non-optimal design for uh, placing your Wi-Fi access point. So would not <laughs> recommend <laughs> to place it on your microwave. That, that is uh, not the good best place for for a for a, a access point. And um, then we had a um, discussion going on this week. Uh, autopilot for existing devices, right? Yeah. So that's been an interesting one. I know you covered that a little bit last week. Mm -hmm. So can you give us a rundown of it? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, basically the change that was made here after some um, a uh, lively discussion uh, about a month ago on uh, social media is that if you are blocking Windows uh, personal devices from enrolling into Intune, the autopilot for existing devices scenario has changed a little bit. If you're blocking personal devices, you must uh, register your device into autopilot before actually going through the enrollment process. In the past, you could simply drop a JSON file into a specific directory on an operating system, and that device would know exactly which deployment profile to use and go ahead and go through the enrollment process without you registering. Um, that still works if you are not blocking personal devices. However, if you are blocking personal devices, you will need to uh, register the device ahead of time. Uh, Steve Weiner did a really nice uh, video on this last week that I think we shared, mm -hmm. um, where basically you can use the get Windows Autopilot info uh, script with an online switch in order to register the device ahead of time, or you can create a custom script, of course, using Microsoft Graphs and PowerShell. I also still think, I haven't had a chance to test it though, I, I think the provisioning package route is still working. Um, so someone mentioning that on Twitter earlier today. Uh, just to prove a point earlier this uh, afternoon, in fact, while I was on stage <laughs> together with uh, Mike Terrell, uh, I got, went to a tenant that was not locked for personal devices or enrollment device restrictions for personal devices. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was able to successfully both uh, enroll a device uh, using that method. That was a very dark screen. <laughs> Hyper-V does that at times. Yeah. So give me a moment and I will um, reconvince it to, to uh, show something. It's the normal standard amount of VMs that one has on a Hyper-V lab node, of course. Uh, yeah, I've reduced it a lot of bit. A lot <laughs> of but yeah, so this is Frank that has been enrolled. And then my other VM was actually in the uh, uh, out of box experience phase of autopilot, and this one was staged using the following technique. Uh, we call it autopilot fast because it stole a borrowed a script from Michael Niehaus that will, in fact, uh, uh, adjust the uh, autopilot profile a bit. I have that script right here, and what it does, it also injects the computer name that you had on the device and add that to the JSON file and then it continues and basically just copies that file to the location and then remove the NFM file. I mean, that can some drivers here as well. And then that machine came up in, I don't know, five, six minutes uh, into the state here. So quite beautiful solution. But again, this is like, unfortunately, that that's not available. All right. Uh, I see some hello from the community. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for confirming the uh, the audio as well. Always appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, let's see. Peter had a nice blog post here. So that one showed up recently uh, in the feed. But long story short, um, let me go into that blog post. Um, 
allow you to, um, yes, Peter, I'm okay with your cookies. Uh, but it basically send an email to your users when they have devices that are not running an okay Windows version or an unsupported Windows version uh, for that environment. So quite elegant. This one take you step by step on how to do that configuration. And uh, yeah, of course, we'll share that link as usual. Then you, Andrew, stumbled across a little issue, should we say, with config manager 2309 and 2403. Oh, yes. And depending on how you're managing this in your organization, this can be a, a serious issue. So for co-managed <clears throat> clients managing Defender from Intune, uh, which is one of the ways that I've recommended people do it recently, especially if you are uh, in between Config Manager and Intune. That's a nice method. Um, but if you are managing the Defender settings from Intune, uh, Config Manager is cleaning up those <clears throat> settings uh, after the fact. So uh, as we have up here, Microsoft is aware of this. Um, and uh, I believe the workaround, uh, though I've heard inconsistent experiences with it, uh, the workaround is is disabling endpoint protection in client settings in Config Manager. If you're I, let us know what your experience is. Uh, and as soon as Microsoft has, be sure to share them. All right. Thank you, sir. And we have a confirmation of another thing that stopped working, but that was planned for for, for a good while, but Trond, um, posted this the other day. Uh, yeah, so the we've talked about this a little bit. Uh, the old Microsoft Intune uh, PowerShell modules and a lot of the example scripts that have been around for a long time used a common application ID that was across uh, global tenants, or used globally across tenants, rather. Uh, that was deprecated at the beginning of last month, and it officially stopped working uh, roughly two days ago. So. Uh, if you were still using that application ID and your script stopped working, this is likely the culprit. All right, beautiful. And then there was a nice announcement for those that have started to use um, Intune to manage uh, Mac devices or Macintosh devices. Uh, this one here. That single sign-on is now available, which is, of course, useful. Public preview still, I believe. If you actually get to the the announcement for it, I believe it mentioned that it was public preview. Oh, OK, OK. I'll see if that one actually goes somewhere. No, it just shows the, the image, but all right. Thank you, sir. Yep. Still an exciting milestone for this. I mean, it feels like people have been talking about this for quite a while now. so. To get it publicly is great. Um, on that note, though, unfortunately, I think I have to leave you. All right, all right. I'll be here crying. I, I don't want to, but I must. All right. Thank all you, right. sir. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Thank, thank you, everybody. Good luck with your session, sir. And I will uh, take over from here. All right. But that was the um, update part of things. Um, Thank you.